Orthodox this week, Greece selects a pro-bailout government sparking hopes of recovery in Europe, while the US Fed indicates the American economy will continue to face pressure. We'll tell you how this impacts your stock investments. Oil prices fall to an 18-month low and the rupee crosses 57 to the dollar. Find out what it means for your stock. And later on the show, Devin Chokri recommends Tata Motors as a smart investment option for you. We'll find out why. Welcome to All About Stocks. You're watching ET Now. Another volatile week at the markets behind us. We were reacting to news from across the globe and political instability at home. Remember, this is a show for long-term investors. We'll help you with your stock portfolio. We'll also help you find that perfect investment in the market right now. There's an email ID at the bottom of your screen where you can write to us and send us any question you might have about your stocks. But even if there's just information you want, we'd be glad to answer your questions on the show. Now, before we go across to talk about your portfolios, it's important for us to find out what happened in the markets this week and how those numbers ended on Friday. My colleague Avan is here with the latest of the markets and the rupee. Avan. It was a pretty heavy week in terms of the macros, but for the index, it was a gain of just about two-tenths of a percent for the Nifty, which failed to cross 51.50. And for the Sensex also, we gained close to two-tenths of a percent for the week, unable to sustain above 17,000. On Monday, you had the Reserve Bank of India, which came out with a double whammy. It went ahead and held the key interest rates and did not tinker with either the CRR or the repo rate. Some of the banks were subdued on the back of that news. But the big news this week was also the CCI, which levied a penalty of 50% on the FY10 and 11 profits on cement companies on account of cartelization. Big exclusive news also came in through the week on Reliance Industries, where they are evaluating a strategic option for their textile division, according to sources, looking to sell their textile division, Vimal, and they have appointed Rothschild, which is said to be the investment banker for the deal, a very subdued Reliance Industries throughout the week. But away from that was the rupee, which certainly dominated a lot of attention. It was a free fall against the U.S. dollar. It cascaded to as low as 57.30 on account of a slew of reasons. And in fact, that would be a 3% fall so far this entire week. It's biggest weekly fall since the 23rd of September. Well, Aman, we were reacting a lot to those global developments both in Europe and in the U.S. this week. Can you take us through what exactly happened and how our markets reacted? This week was also plagued with quite a few global developments. To start off with, you had the Greece elections on Sunday night, and the pro-bailout parties in Greece this time around led the electoral projections. You had most of the financial assets which gained globally on the back of that, and the euro also which continued to rally and extended its gains, as did crude oil prices. And the IMF coming forward and saying that it is ready to engage with the new Greek government on the economy. Meantime, you had the U.S. Federal Reserve, which also came out with those crucial policy decisions, leaving the key interest rates unchanged at 0.25%, and they left the federal funds raise target unchanged at 0 to 0.25%, extending Operation Twist through the end of this year. Most of the economists believe that the Fed is likely to eventually launch a more aggressive program to buy bonds outright. All right, everyone, joining us now to help us understand what all of that means for our stock portfolios is Devin Chokshi. Mr. Chokshi, thank you so much for joining us on the show and sparing time to be with us. The biggest impact, of course, uh, on the Indian equity markets this week were the global markets. And some, you know, there was a lot of expectation that the election results in Greece will ease the worries in Europe. That hasn't happened. Added to that is the U.S. now and its concerns of growth into that mix as well. What's your outlook? How drastically will this affect our markets in the weeks going forward? Be it U.S., be it uh, Europe, I think it's unlikely to turn positive in a shorter period of time. And it would have its impact onto the Indian market as well and all other emerging markets along with. So I'm not totally going to be dependent on the uh, global market outlook for the time being. But some of the equations which are turning positive for Indian markets are, one of them is very distinct one, is the fall in the crude oil prices. With the fall in the crude oil prices by about $25 to a barrel, it is directly having an impact on subsidy bill, on a fuel subsidy bill in this country up to the extent of around 30%. And this is a substantial amount of money which you can think of because 30% reduction in the subsidy bill would translate to a substantial amount of saving in current account deficit. From 4%, the current account deficit would start, can reduce to somewhere around 3.3% straight away. And that would mean that 
international investors once again would start looking at India from positive aspect because of the fall in the subsidy bill. If rupees start appreciating, which I believe it will, because of the inflow of money which would come along with after the fall in the subsidy bill, would definitely mean that I think the further amount of uh, further amount of current account deficit will cut, and I expect the current account deficit to go down to 2.5 dollar per bar, uh, for 2.5 percent when the oil comes down to 80 dollar per barrel and the rupee stands at 51, 52 to a dollar. So if this thing comes true, then going forward situation can turn little better and not otherwise. I am relatively more confident than what I was earlier as far as India market is concerned, though negative news flow continues to be challenging as far as I think the global outlook is, global outlook is concerned. There was also some talk domestically about the fact that we are seeing some changes in the government right now. It's possible that Pranam Mukherjee will be uh, president and we'll see a new finance minister come in. There's some sort of hope coming into the market as far as the domestic moves are concerned. Could you tell us where your call is as far as the Indian market and the challenges we've seen domestically? What, what is your view on what we're going to see happen over the next couple of months? I do believe on a little bit on hopeful side that this person joining me or taking over the finance ministry charge will certainly take up some of the immediate decisions which are required and those decisions are required to be taken largely for bringing growth in the country. One of the important decisions which may be probably I think allowing the capital inflow to take place through FI and FDI route and that is where I think some amount of assurance stroke I think the policy change may be required in retro tax regime. If that takes place then to my mind I think the job would be well done by the person who assumes the finance ministry. Let's talk about a couple of sectors. I want to talk about oil marketing companies. We know, like you said, there is some relief coming in from the price of crude, but there's also the rupee, which is at a record low. What's your call on oil marketing companies right now? Assuming that the oil prices are coming down further, and assuming that I think the crude oil basket at some point of time would be available between 80 and 85 dollars per barrel to Indian OMCs, then in such kind of a situation, and assuming that the rupee can also probably appreciate as I explained earlier, assuming that rupee to a dollar at around 52, I would think that most of the OMCs would turn relatively more attractive than otherwise. However, the overhang would be whether the government would start again once, or start acting once again and start uh, directing the fuel prices on their own or they would leave it on the market driven kind of a formula which they started with for petrol. However, all said and done, I think the things could probably look up a little better. I am relatively more confident about the upstream company like ONGC, vis-à-vis the OMCs at this point of time, uh, with the crude oil prices falling. You have always been of the opinion that because of the subsidy burden and because of the fact that it's so ambiguous from the government's point of view, that a retail long-term investor should stay away from that sector entirely. Are you standing by that still? Would you still recommend that retail investors avoid the oil marketing sector? If government has continued to operate in this particular sector by indulging themselves time and again, particularly I think mechanism of pricing, I somehow other thing not carry the confidence of buying for long term investment. But yes, I think given the situation in which we are and probably if the government is deciding not to intervene into the oil product prices, then probably I think in the shorter run there could be some kind of an optimism or a hope in this kind of a Case, wherein investors can come and trade into this particular segment of OMC. We saw that fine imposed on cement companies, 6,300 crore rupees payable in the next 90 days. Now that cement stock was beaten down in the market over the last couple of days. But what's your call on the sector on companies like JP Associates, Grassim Industries, Ambuja Cement, all of them took a beating. These were the top four losers of the Nifty. But uh, what's your advice to retail investors who are holding cement stocks right now? Uh, cement companies are likely to contest the CCI order. And in that context, they are certainly going to drive home the point that the kind of penalty which has been levied on them, they are not justified. The penalties are quite steep. In fact, I think those penalties would make uh, the position of some of the cement companies very weak. Third point, I think from the data, nobody can argue uh, against cement companies that they have been basically managing their capacities. According to me, possibility of uh, uh, the contest, uh, when the cement company contests for this particular order, possibility of cement companies finding favorable judgment remains high. So to a greater extent, I would think that I think cement companies would probably once again come back into limelight. If the stock prices come down for some reason, the investor can take a call on buying in a contra basis 
and probably wait for favorable judgment, which could possibly give them an upside in a shorter period of time. So my view is that I think buy at lower levels and probably try and book your profits when it goes up on the basis or expectation of the positive judgment. All right, buy at lower levels. I also want to bring you in on RIL. We've seen that news come in this week, lower expectations from the gas block. There's also a possibility that the company might be selling its textile arm. For uh, the benefit of the viewers who have RIL stock in their portfolio, what's your call on that stock? Well, from long-term investment point of view, Reliance is sitting on a brilliant prospect. I think each of its business units, each five of them I would call it now, telecom and retail included, are sitting on a brilliant prospect. From long-term investment point of view, I am not too much worried about it. But in the near term, yes, there are certain headwinds I think, which are not allowing the stock to go up. And one of them is certainly uh, government not approving the CAPEX program, or not approving the CAPEX program for D6 fields, and which is resulting into lower output. And at the same time, uh, the market-driven price should come in to reliance. Basically, as for the agreement also, I think it is likely to come from 14, FY14. So from that point of view, I think if they start getting the market-driven price of the gas, and on a higher output, if they approve the GATEX program, then in such situation, reliance on an exploration side also, I think, remains a very promising company. All right, strong advice going in there for those of you who hold the RIL stock. Don't panic right now. It's time for a quick break. On the other side, Vivian brings us his first pick of the week, Tata Motors. We'll tell you why you should be investing in that stock right now. That's on the other side. Don't go away.